Okay, today, looking at a very interesting subject, and I'm not picking on the disciples, because I want to show you that what they did, we do. Now, the setting we have here is Jesus Christ, God, in the flesh, is living, breathing, eating, and he's got 12 men. And by the end of the story, he's down to 11. And Jesus, God, with his mouth and his tongue, his vocal cords, in Matthew 16, 21, from that time forth, began Jesus to show unto his disciples how he must go to Jerusalem, suffer many things of the elders, and the chief priests and scribes, be killed and be raised again the third day. Now, Jesus Christ is speaking about something that Christians are to be preaching. He says it in, in, in Matthew, uh, Mark chapter 16, go to all the world and preach the gospel. This is the gospel before it happens. This, he's talking about his death, his burial, and his resurrection. That's what we're to preach. We believe that by faith. He's got, I'm, I'm going to say, 11 disciples because Judas will go kill himself. He's got the 11 disciples. They are listening to him. They are watching him. They may be seeing his lips move. Their ears are there. Whether they're staring at God, listening to him, or, or looking down at the ground, looking up at the trees, they hear Jesus tell them he's going to Jerusalem, he's going to die, he's going to be resurrected again three days. That's very important. Now we're going to look at some in Matthew. Of Matthew pointing to Jesus, the Messiah, the King of of Israel. Seventeen twenty-three. And they shall kill him. Well, verse twenty two. And when they abode in Galilee, Jesus said unto him, So here's Jesus, he's God. He's got a mouth of the man. He's got a tongue of a man. He's got teeth of a man. He's got the vocal cords of a man. This is God Almighty in the flesh talking. The living, breathing Jesus Christ. I'm going to say the 11 disciples again because Judas won't be there at the end of the story. They are listening to God. They are hearing God. God. He is speaking to them. If you got a red letter Bible, which my, I don't, but the screen, red letter, the words of Jesus, the Son of Man shall be betrayed in the hands of men. They shall kill him, and the third day he shall, rise, he, he shall be raised again, resurrection. And they were exceedingly sorry. We you mean you're going to die. So, being sorry, they acknowledged what Jesus just told them. And what did Jesus just tell them? Jesus himself is going to be killed and he's going to be resurrected again three days. And they're sorry. I'd be too. 20. 20. Verse 19. Verse 18. Behold, we go up to Jerusalem. The Son of Man shall be betrayed. Same word. Unto the chief priests, unto the scribes, they shall condemn him to death. They shall deliver him to the Gentiles to mock, to scourge, that's whipping, to crucify him, to kill him on a cross, to nail him to a cross, death, and the third day he shall rise again. Now, there are two messages here. We're going to do one. Maybe later I'll do the other one. He talks about the death, crucified, death. 
That's the Roman capital punishment of the day. You are nailed on a cross to die. Jesus says, not only am I going to be crucified, death. The third day he shall rise again. He tells them. He tells them he's going to die. Chapter 27. Verse 4. I'm sorry about that. That was something wrong. So, uh, 2714. Uh, no, 27. My terrible handwriting. Twenty-seven sixty-four. All right, now this is not Jesus. Sixty-three. The Pharisees and the chief priests. Sixty-two. Oh, sixty-two. Now the next day. That followed the day of the preparation, the chief priests and Pharisees came together unto Pilate, saying, Sir, remember that this deceiver said, While he was yet alive, after three days will rise again. The chief priests and the Pharisees, the religious people of the time of Jesus, who have seen and watched and listened to God in the flesh, Jesus, they acknowledge the man Jesus said he will be killed, he will die, he will be crucified, and three days there will be a rising again, he will be risen, there will be a resurrection. The high priest and Pharisees said, we heard what he said. Both of those are against Jesus. His enemies acknowledge the death. And the resurrection. Okay, twenty-eight. In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulchre. And behold, there was a great earthquake. The angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning, his raiment white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. The angel answered, said unto him, Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus, who was crucified, died, death, capital punishment of Rome, the crucified. Jesus already told us there will be a crucifixion, there will be a death. It happened. He is not here. He is risen. There's the resurrection. The angel says here he was crucified. He died. The angel certified Jesus died. The angel certified that he's not here. He's risen. That's the greatest, best news out of the world. The death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, the death, the burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ is called the gospel. That is what we are to believe. That is what we are to preach. Mark 16. Come and see the place where the Lord lay. Okay, we, they knew, not we, they knew where the body of Jesus was buried. They knew it. Go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. Where are the disciples? We went through one, two, three, four scriptures 
five of the chief priests. But we went through four scriptures that Jesus stopped, addressed the eleven disciples, because Jesus would kill himself. He addressed the eleven disciples and said, I'm going to Jerusalem. I am going to be killed. I am going to be crucified, death. I am going to die. In three days, the third day, I am going to be risen. I am going to be resurrected. He has been crucified. He has died. It is the third day. Where are the disciples? You would think if they listened to Jesus, they would have been sitting there with their lawn chairs or their park bed, whatever they had to sit in, you would figure the third day they would be at that sepulcher, they would be watching that sepulcher and waiting for the third day. And yet the angel tells the women, go quickly and tell his disciples that he's risen from the dead. The disciples are not there. And you, you know, I've heard Christians, oh, you know, I was there when Jesus died. No, 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 you do the same thing the disciples did. The only ones that are at the grave on the third day of uh, the, 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 the resurrection of Jesus, the only ones that are there are the pris are prison keepers, the guards that are put at the tomb to make sure that the disciples don't come and steal the body. The disciples don't even show up at all. The women show up on the morning, and the women are coming, when you look at Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the women are not coming for a resurrected Jesus. They're coming for a dead Jesus to finish the wrapping of Jesus' dead body. So no one listened to Jesus. No one believed in the resurrection. Those women were coming, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. They're coming to finish the burial ceremony of, of the wrap and of the dead body. There's no dead body. He's not here. He's risen. you got a risen Savior. He told you that. We looked at the verses in, in Matthew. We didn't look at the verses in Mark. We didn't look at the verses in Luke. We didn't look at the verses of John. But they're there. Jesus in the human form with a mouth, with teeth, with lips, tongue, vocal cord, told the disciples, I'm going to crucify, I'm going to be killed, I'm going to be buried, I'm going to be resurrected again. Here it is. No one is at that tomb waiting for him. The guards are there only to make sure the disciples don't steal or anybody steal that body. John, Gospel of John, first day of the week, Mary Magdalene sees the scepter, she, she sees the stone is gone, then he runs and comes to Simon Peter, Simon Peter should have been there, and the other disciple whom Jesus loved, that's John. They come to the sepulchre, it's empty. There is no body of Jesus. He's been resurrected. Peter therefore went forth, and the other disciple came to the sepulchre. So they both ran together. The other disciple did not run. Peter came first to the sepulchre. He stooping down, looking in, saw the linen clothes lying, but no body. Yet went none in. Then comes the son of Peter, followed him, went into the sepulchre, seeing the linen clothes lying, the, the, the wrap. And the napkin, which is about the head, not lying with the linen clothes, but wrapped together in a place by itself. Then went in also the other disciple, John, which came first to the sepulchre and saw and believed. Okay. For yet they knew not the, the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. He believed, but they didn't know about the resurrection. Then the disciples went again unto their own home. Uh, 
All right, all right. I believe there's no body here. I believe the clothes are over there. I believe the napkins are over here. But it says, for yet they knew not the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. The scripture is, let me tell you, Matthew 16, 21, Matthew 17, 23, Matthew 20, verse 19, and Matthew 27, verse 64. Well, that Matthew 6, 24 was the, the high priest and the chief priest and the Pharisees. For they knew not the scripture. That means they heard Jesus. They were sorrowful for, of what Jesus said, but they didn't get it. Why didn't they stay at the sepulcher? It had to be so. There's no body. I mean, no body. The body. No arms, no hands, no trunk, no, no head. Just a clue. They should have stayed at that sepulcher and let's see what happens. Don't you remember Peter? He said he was going to die and he was going to rise again. They had at the moment that Jesus died in that period, they had the graves were open and the saints were, were walking around Jerusalem. And they come to the tomb, right? No body, just the clothes. Okay, uh, let's go home. Mary stays around and Jesus shows up. The disciples went home. Mary stayed. Mary saw Jesus. The disciples didn't see nobody. After Jesus told them what was going to happen that has now already happened in John 20. Now, Mark. Mark 16. The close of Mark or 16. This is after the, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Watch this. Verse 9. Now when Jesus was risen early the first day of the week, he appeared unto Mary Magdalene, that was back in John 20, out of whom he cast out seven devils. She went and told them that had been with him, the eleven disciples, the twelfth one, Judas, is killed. He dies. They mourned and wept. That's, what was it, Matthew 21, 16, 21, or Matthew 17, 23. I forget which one. He said, I'm going to be crucified. And they, they were sorrowful. Okay? And they, when they heard that he was alive and had been seen of her, Mary, believed not. Out of the very mouth of Jesus, he prophesied his death, his burial, and resurrection. Now that he's died, and now that he's been resurrected, Mary comes up to him and says, I've seen Jesus, i talked to Jesus, and the eleven said, yeah, right. Out there, he appeared in another form on the two of them, the, the, the two men on the road to Emmaus, or Emmaus, and they walked and went into the country, and they went and told unto the residue, neither believed they them. So they get a testimony of three people, Mary and two men, that Jesus has been seen after his death, after they visited the empty sepulchre. Jesus has been seen. Jesus said he would die. Jesus said he would be buried. Jesus said he'd be resurrected. Three people have seen Jesus and the disciples say, yeah, right. What would you have done? I've done the same thing. Yeah, right. I'm the kind of person, I don't know what you call I'm the kind of person, i got to see it. You, know, you say, well, you know, there's a hurricane coming in towards Florida, a hurricane. I'm not going to believe that hurricane until I see the winds and the rain. I don't know what you call that kind of person. That's what I am. You know, a friend will call me, hey, you know, I, I got me a, a brand new purple car. All right. 
I'm coming over. Okay, I won't believe the purple car until it pulls in front in front of my house or in my driveway. After he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat, they should have been sitting at the sepulchre and upbraid them for their unbelief and hardness of heart because they believed not them, the three, that had seen him after he was resurrected. Then he says, go in the world and preach the gospel to every creature. You preach that I died, I was buried, and I rose again the third day according to the scriptures as Paul writes to the church in Corinthians. What are you to preach? Uh, it's either 1 Corinthians 11. Or 2 Corinthians 11. Uh-oh. It's in Corinthians. A 15. Here we go. First Corinthians. What is the gospel? Moreover, brother, I declare unto you the gospel which I preach unto you, which also ye have received, wherein ye stand, by which ye are saved, if you keep in memory that which I preach unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I declare unto you first of all, that which I received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and was buried and then rose again the third day according to the scripture. That is the, that is the gospel word to preach. Not your church, not your pastor, not your fellowship. Word to preach the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. What did Jesus tell those disciples? He said, I'm going to be, I'm going to be killed. I'm going to be crucified. Third day I'll rise again. That's our message. And the disciples did not believe it. Out of the mouth of Jesus. You see my Bible here? It's my old Schofield King James 1611 Bible. This is the Bible with my wife Lisa. This is my Bible I went to. Charity uh, Bible Baptist Institute. This is the Bible that I became a doctor of theology. You know, there's sometimes, reading from Genesis to Revelation, there's sometimes I'll read something like, oh, come on, really? There's sometimes I'll, I'll open this Bible, I'll read something, and the devil will say, do you really believe that God opened up the Red Sea? Come on, you really believe that? Come on, you're a Christian wolf. Do you really believe? You never had doubts. You never had times in your Christian walk, your salvation, and something in the Bible, and you just had that moment of, you know what? I don't know. I'm not sure. Come on, how, how, really, how, how did they get all those animals on that ark? You see, you can't say, oh, look at the disciples. No, you got to look at yourself because there are things in our Christian walk that we don't believe. Jesus said, to the, if you had faith as a, as, a, as a grain of mustard seed, you would say to this mountain, be moved into the sea. Say to this tree, this tree would be moved into the sea. There's a tree across the street from me right now. The wind is blowing it. If I had the faith that Jesus said, I would be able to say to that tree, tree, go over there. And it ain't moving. Why? Because I don't have the full faith that God wants me to have. Like those 11 disciples. They didn't have the full faith. When Jesus died, that, that was it for them. They're up in that room, they're crying, and they're all upset, things are done. We thought, and many of the Israelites and the Jews thought, hey, we thought it was him, he's dead. Oh, woe is me. Have you ever got into situations in your Christian world, 
Oh, it's woe is me. Just like the disciples. Just like the disciples.